Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Clarion Panoptics Pro. This lens has drawn in some attention among the ophthalmologists, but little information is known about the lens except for the fact that it uses more amount of light. So Alcon claims with this lens that, that the uh, original Panoptics lens used 88% of light but the Panoptics Pro, because of uh, the uh, enlightened next generation technology, there's a 6% less light scatter and therefore it, it utilizes more light, around 94% of light is utilized and which may lead to a better contrast for the patients, right? So, uh, you know, before I go ahead, this is a caveat that not much of information is there about how Panoptics Pro utilizes 94% of light, reduces light scatter by 6%, not much of information is there. And most of the information that is quoted over here is actually data on file, file which is not in the public domain. So let's go into the DFU or the IFU of the Clarion Panoptics and the Canop Clarion Panoptics Pro. Let's first see if there is any difference in the basic platform of the lens. Both are based on the Clarion material and both have a same light transmittance at 403 nanometers. 10% cut off at 403 nanometers for a 20 diopter IUL for the Panoptics, for the Panoptics 4 also it's a 10% transmittance at 403 nanometers at 20 diopter IUL. So that means is that you know the more amount of light utilization as claimed by the company, less light scatter as claimed by the company is not because of any refractive changes of the IUL, any base change of the IUL material, right? So the IUL material is the same. Next, let us see the pre-market approval of the FDA, right? Now, from my limited understanding, what I understand is that the Alcon did not have to go through an FDA, entire FDA process approval with the Panoptics Pro because the Panoptics, the parent lens, was already FDA approved and it has gone through the FDA's, uh, you know, clinical trials. So what actually draws my attention over here is the approval order statement, which says that the Panoptics Pro models has a minor optical modification, minor optical modification. And the question is, what kind of minor optical modification could have gone in the Clarion Panoptics Pro that helps the lens to reduce light scatter and utilize more amount of light. Right, so um, next uh, let me uh, show you a kind of, you know, a video that has been popular in the LinkedIn and I will play the video. Let's listen to the surgeon here. Tindispotopsias. To the surgeon and under high magnification, the lenses appear quite similar. However, we can notice what I'm going to call a softer transition of the diffractive optical rings. Thank you for watching. The Panoptics original. Well, what the surgeon here says is that the when he actually sees the Panoptics Pro under the uh, under the microscope, what he finds is that there's a there's a there's no much difference in the optics of the lens you know that the pan optics the central bullseye is around 1.164 millimeters the diffractive zone is within the 4.5 millimeters of the lens and uh, you know there's not much of change there the total number of steps is 15 steps so not no change with, between the pan optics and the pan optics pro under the microscope we realize you know in the optics but what he sees a change over here softer transition of the diffractive optical rings and this is not surprising because you know here i i want to talk to you something about uh, the concept of stray light and what do we mean by stray light let, let me let me talk to you about this now when light passes through any optics and human lens natural crystalline lens is also a kind of lens optics right so when light passes through the lens there will be some amount of backscattering of light 
and forward scattering of light. We call backscattering when the light is scattered back to the observer. If you're seeing the if if you're seeing the human eye over here, if the light comes back to your eye as an observer, that's backscattering of light. Forward light scattering of light is as is the scattering on the retina. And we know the largest concentration of cone cells is within the fovea, within the foveola fovea region. And if you go Two to two, two to three degrees away from this region, you know, and if light is actually scattered and falls in this region, it kind of creates a veil of luminance. That's called the stray light, and this is more damaging. In uh, you know, it brings down the contrast for the patients, especially in the glare situations. And if you have in, in put a multifocal eye, you will if there's more amount of scatter of the light. The scatter of the light could be because of the diffractive steps in most cases for the diffractive lenses. So that scatter of light, that forward scattering of light, actually goes beyond this central two degrees. You know, and any light that falls beyond this two degrees, two point five to three degrees. It actually creates a veil of luminance and it kind of brings down the contrast of the patient. Having understood that, let me also bring your attention to this study over here, which actually compares the stray light. I explained to you what is stray light. Stray light. What is the stray light in different types of multifocal lenses? And they kind of, you know, compared the panoptics, the original panoptics lens. Uh, with the symphony lens and with the SN60WF, which is the IQ lens, which is the monofocal lens. And they found out, so this is the lenses that they compared over here. And they found out that the symphony had the greatest amount of stray light. That is, when light passed through the symphony lens because of the light getting scattered, uh, when it passed through the diffractive lens, it, it the scattering of light, the stray light was more with the symphony less with the panoptics and lesser with the monofocal lens. That's not surprising. A monofocal lens will always have less amount of stray light. But panoptics had some amount of stray light which could be reduced to increase the contrast of the patient, right? So that's basically. And when they kind of, you know, I'm trying to give you the reasons actually which which uh, you know uh, creates this stray light and they found in the symphony iul a non-homogeneous micro rings within the diffractive aging so there were some non-homogeneous micro rings in the diffractive agents which could be improved and therefore you know many companies actually are constantly trying to improve their diffractive optics so that stray light so that scattering of light can be uh, you know minimized as much as possible now if i show you this over here the, there are different ways of you know uh, smoothening the diffractive steps over here this is the patent from the geometric lens and this is the kind of you know smoothening that this lens has actually gone through if you design the lens as a top hat you know it, this this actually square box is basically showing you the uh, a diffractive step without smoothening versus a smoothening diffractive step. Now, with the smoothening, you actually kind of bring down the scattering of the light. You, you know, if you if you also go into the Zai, see, they call they talk about the SMP technology. Well, this is a terminology that the company has given over here. Clearly, more about a marketing one. But uh, you know, you could see over here that the smoothening has been done compared to uh, to uh, a diffractive valve which does not have gone which has not gone through the smoothening so my initial impression of this lens and again i say that this is with the caveat that this is basically a uh, um, an assumption because not much of information is there for the size for sorry for the for the panoptics pro lens today so uh, my initial impression about the Panoptics Pro lens is that, you know, some amount of changes, design changes has gone through the, uh, with, the, with the steps. You know, some amount of smoothening has been done with the steps so as to reduce the light scatter, the, the forward light scatter. Uh, onto the retina so that more amount of light could be utilized. But remember, light scattering that we measure 
actually in the R&D setup that is measured is with regard to a one particular wavelength of light, one particular wavelength of light. But the your patient is exposed to an integrated wavelength of light, white light, which has many different wavelengths, right? So what you see in the R&D setup may not actually always reflect back into the patient's eyes, right? But we are very hopeful that this lens is actually going to give even better uh, vision for the patients. We know that panoptics has been an excellent lens and this uh, and uh, any kind of design change that leads to more amount of light utilization will at least bring some improvement for the patients we look forward to more informations from the from alcon companies like alcon um, to help us understand the how part rather than not sticking to rather than just sticking to what part so um, i invite you all to have a look into my website quickguide.org where I have given a basic understanding of science behind diffractive lenses. And I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, you know, uh, for more future updates. Thank you very much.